welcome to the last example in chat model section so so far we've been storing all the past conversations in a variable in memory right but in production grade applications we might ideally want to put it in the cloud so that the user can sort of log back out and then come back after a week and still continue the conversation right so we're going to be doing that uh, in this section so all the history is going to be retrieved from the cloud as soon as the application is going to be uh, turned up basically so for that we are going to be using the firebase fire store database right so let me show you a quick demo of what we are going to be doing in this section so i'm going to run this file so we have a message prompting the user to type in something so i'm going to say um, let's say hey how is it going right it's very simple before i press enter let's actually go to the fire store and you can see the database currently is empty right so let's come back so if i come back and if i press enter you can see that the ai responds with a very simple message right now i'm going to ask it something like let's say what is 2 plus 2 enter let's give it a few seconds yeah it gives back 4 right now if i go back to the database you can now see that we have four messages that have been added right so now if i stop the terminal so let's actually do that let's stop the terminal and then run the file again okay you can see that all the messages are retrieved from the database so that the conversation actually continues right so that is what i've coded out already let's quickly walk through it and you will find it to be pretty simple right the actual main code is not really that much different to what we wrote in the previous section most of the difference is just in the firebase setup part okay so to make it very very simple for you i've typed out installation steps right here it's very straightforward so once we do the cloud setup works firebase firestore setup works the rest of the code is pretty much the same there is literally no difference actually so let's see so the first thing that we're going to be doing is creating a firebase account so you can just go to firebase dot google dot com okay and then let's go to console right uh, so click on this go to console and then we are going to enter the name of the project so i'm going to call it lang chain all right so we don't really need analytics for this and the project creation itself might take a minute or so let's actually give it some time all right so it's done and let's click on this button right here and you are in the project now now you can just go to the build drop down on the left side and choose firebase database and this is what we are going to be working with okay so just go ahead and click on create a database i'm going to leave the location as it is i'm going to click on next next and now we can leave it in test mode because the application is not live yet and once we click on create firestore will be set up for you in this project so if you haven't worked with Firestore before, it is basically just a document-based NoSQL database. So you have something called a collection. In this panel, you can have as many collections as you want. Uh, so for example, we can have a collection called users and each user document can in turn have a collection inside of it. Let's say user messages, right? And each of those message inside of the user messages is going to be what? You guessed it right it's going to be a document so it sort of alternates so we have collection document collection document right so just a short crash course on firebase firestore for you so let's head back and let's look at the third step in the list the third step is going to be you need to retrieve the project id of the project that you've just created so you see our application needs to know which projects firebase database it needs to make changes to because we can have multiple uh, Firebase projects, right? So to get it, we can just go back to Firebase, click on this gear icon, project settings, project ID. So we have it right here. So I'm just going to copy this, come back here, and I'm going to replace this value. Perfect. Now let us look at the fourth step right here. It might look a little bit complicated, but it's actually very simple. So all that we're doing is we need to install the Google Cloud CLI in our computer and sort of authenticate ourselves so that Google or Firebase sort of trusts us when we make changes to the database, right? So the setup is extremely simple. Just click on this particular link right here. Scroll all the way down. Uh, if you're a Mac user, just download the right package based on your operating system. The same for Windows as well. And then wherever this particular package is installed, probably it is going to be in the downloads folder. 
So just go to that particular path in your terminal and run this particular command. The same thing for Windows as well. All the instructions are easily laid out here. You just need to follow it, right? And finally, initialize the CLI by running this last command. And that is it for this step. Let's look at the next step. So we have to configure something called the ADC, right? The documentation makes it very, very easy to set this up. So let's click on this particular link and let's scroll down and you will have to run this particular command and do an application default login, right? So uh, we have to do that. And finally, you will have to run this command as well. And that is the last step. It is pretty simple. There's tons of tutorials out there that will help you set this up. And uh, to be honest, you don't even need any of these tutorials because the documentation is pretty straightforward as well. But uh, we're not going to go too deep into it uh, in this course because it's a little out of scope for this course, right? And finally, we're going to install this particular package as well. Again, this package is built by Langchain and it does all the magic to communicate with the, uh, the Firebase Firestore, right? So this entire thing, the Google Cloud setup is kind of the most difficult part of the section, the setup of it, but the rest of it is very similar to what we did in the previous section. And at the end, we just have to make sure that we have all the right imports up here. Perfect. So let's actually scroll down and see what we have. So the first thing is we need to initialize our Firestore client. So we're going to pass in this particular project ID as well that we had just copied a while ago, right? Now we're going to initialize the Firestore chat message history. This takes in three arguments, the session ID, which is going to be the unique identifier for the current chat session. So we can name it pretty much anything that we want. I've just gone ahead and named it user session. But ideally, this should be a long 16 digit string, right? Because there's going to be a lot of user sessions. And then we are going to have the collection name, right? So the collection name that is going to be created and updated in the Firestore is going to be chat underscore history right here. And you can name it message history as well, right? Pretty much anything that you want. And finally, we are going to pass in the client as well. So the rest of the code is literally no different to what we did in the previous section. So the only change that we're going to be doing is instead of having the history list in memory, we are now going to be having it from the cloud, right? So this chat history is being returned by the Langchain's Firestore class. So now if I run this file, we can just start chatting with the AI, right? And more importantly, we get to store every single message in the cloud. And this particular class, the Firestore chat message history class, sort of abstracts away a lot of the complexities. So it sort of enables very smooth communication between Langchain as well as the Firestore, right? And that brings us to the conclusion of chat models. So I hope you now have a pretty good understanding of how chat models work and how you can actually build production grade applications by storing your messages in the cloud. And also I'm pretty excited about the next core component of Langchain, which is going to be prompt templates. And it's one of the most easiest components to learn but at the same time, when you're building production grade applications, that would save you a lot of time. So I'm pretty excited and I'll see you there.